In this video, you will learn what audience triggers are in Google Analytics 4 and when are they useful. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you are new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GA4, then consider subscribing to this channel. In Google Analytics 4, you can create audiences which can be later used for targeting, for example. When a visitor or user enters the audience, you can configure GA4 to automatically track it as an event. And this can be useful. Why? Let me show you. Let's say that I want to track engaged users. And according to my definition, an engaged user is someone who scrolls down to the bottom of any page and stays on a page for at least 60 seconds. So if these two interactions occur within the same session, I would like to treat that user as an engaged user. To do that, first we need to track certain events. Scroll event is tracked automatically by GA4, and time on page tracking can be implemented with Google Tag Manager. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, New, Trigger Configuration, and then keep looking for Timer. Here we can enter 60,000, so it means 60 seconds. The limit is 1, and let's say that I want to track this on any page. So page path contains slash because on every page, page path contains slash. And let's name this timer 60 seconds and hit save. When it comes to scroll tracking, as I've said, this is automatically tracked by Google Analytics 4. So if I go to GA4 admin and then data streams and select my web data stream, here in the enhanced measurement section, I see that scroll is enabled and also I see that this toggle is enabled. So when a visitor scrolls to the bottom of the page, or in other words, scrolls below the 90% threshold, then GE4 will automatically track a scroll event. Now, if we go back to the timer, this trigger alone is not enough. We also need to go to tags and send a timer event to Google Analytics 4. In this video, I presume that you already have installed GE4 on a website and you know what a configuration tag is. If you don't, then take a look at the description of this video where I explain how to install GA4 with Google Tag Manager. So in the Tags section, click New, Tag Configuration, then GA4 Event, and then select your existing GA4 configuration tag. In the event name, you can enter any name you want. For example, I can say Timer 60 Seconds. No event parameters are needed in my case. So all I need to do right now is just select a trigger. So click anywhere and then select that timer 60 seconds trigger. Let's name this tag G for event timer 60 seconds and hit save. Now let's test this on a website. Click preview button in the top right corner, then enter the URL of the page on which you want to test this. Click connect. And here I can scroll down then I can go to Google Analytics 4, Configure, and Debug View to see if the scroll event was tracked. And here it is, we have Page View and we have Scroll. Now if I stay on a page for 60 seconds or more, I should then see the Timer event right here. Then I see that my tag fired. And if I go to Google Analytics Debug View, I would expect to see that event somewhere eventually right here. And here is that event. So these are two ingredients that we are going to need in order to create an audience trigger. Now in this video, I assume that you have at least some basic knowledge about audiences, but if you don't, then take a look at the description of this video because I have a tutorial about that as well. But in a nutshell, an audience is a group of visitors on your website that match certain criteria. When you create an audience, then you can later show your retargeting ads for that particular audience. Also, you will be able to use audience in places like comparisons of your Google Analytics 4 reports. But in this video, we are going to focus on one particular feature of the audience, and that is audience triggers. So let's take a look how that works. Go to audiences, and then click new audience. Click create custom audience. And here we want to enter conditions that our users should meet in order to enter this audience. As I have earlier said, I want to track those users who have stayed on any page for more than 60 seconds and have scrolled almost to the bottom of any page. So to do that, we can select the scroll event 
and we also want to track an event that is called timer 60 seconds. I don't see any suggestions right here because this is a new event and Google Analytics 4 did not have enough time to process it. So don't worry if you don't see the suggestion and then hit enter. Now I want that these two events would happen together in the same session. That is why I have to click right here and select within the same session. Now let's name this audience and here we can configure the audience trigger. So audience trigger basically is a feature that allows you to automatically track an event if a visitor enters the audience. So to do that, you should click create new and then enter the name of the event that will be automatically tracked. I usually like to start audience event names with AU. This means that this event was dispatched by the audience trigger and then underscore and some name of the event. For example, engaged user. By default, this setting will fire only once per user based on the membership duration. But if you want to fire an event every time this happens, so for example, if a visitor comes to your website the next day and does the same thing. So if you want to also track the same event that next day, you should click this checkbox. So this will track that event every time users membership in the audience refreshes. Click Save. Now it's time to save the audience and then test if this is working. Click Save. Let's go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4 and then let's go to the website where we have installed our GE4 and test everything from the beginning. So I will click refresh, then I will scroll down and then I will wait for 60 seconds until that timer event also appears. So for now I will pause the video and will unpause it after probably 50 seconds or so. So 60 seconds have passed. I see the timer in the preview mode. I click on it and I see that my tag has fired. Also, I see in the debug view that the scroll event has been already tracked. Now I should receive the timer, 60 seconds, and I did it. It looks like there is some delay and I'm still not getting this event. So in this case, what I would do is that I would wait for maybe 20, 30 minutes and then would try to do the same test again. And here I am back. I have waited for probably 30 minutes or so. That did not help. Then I decided to clear my Google Analytics cookies so that Google Analytics would treat me as a new user who lands on the page. And then after that, I repeated my test. And as you can see, the audience trigger event is available right here. That happened because I landed on the page. Then I scrolled down to the bottom of the page and then I stayed on the page for 60 seconds. As a result, Google Analytics tracked this event and within the next 24 hours, it will appear in other reports such as reports, engagement events, then in exploration reports and so on. But what you need to keep in mind in this case is that if the same user repeats these actions multiple times in the same session, then you will track multiple events based on the audience trigger. So for example, if I land on a page, stay for one minute, then scroll down, then go to the next page and do the same thing, this will result in two events. I mean, two audience trigger events. So if you want to limit this event just to fire once per session, then you would need to add another event, which is session start. This is an automatically tracked event that fires once per session. So that way you will be sure that it will fire no more than once per session. Now, if you want to edit the settings of your audience trigger, unfortunately, you won't be able to do that because if you go to audiences, then click three dots next to the audience and edit, you will see that you cannot change any settings right here. And since you cannot change this, you cannot change the moment when your audience trigger will fire. So if after all, you still want to change the settings, you will need to delete the existing audience or actually in this case, archive it. And then you will need to create a new audience with some updated conditions. Now, if you're thinking of some other situations where audience triggers might be useful, here are some examples. So I could click new audience once again, and then create new audience. And in this case, let's pretend that I have implemented not only regular event tracking, but also e-commerce tracking. So it means that I'm tracking purchases, I'm tracking internal promotions, I'm tracking when products are added to a cart and so on. So if you follow the naming convention of Google Analytics for e-commerce tracking, you will have the following events. One of them is purchase. So in this case, we will be filtering down to users who have made any purchase. And then another event is select promotion. 
Right now, I don't see any suggestions because I actually haven't tracked this kind of event in this property, but let's pretend that I actually am tracking this. So when it comes to e-commerce tracking, select promotion means that a visitor clicked on any internal banner on your website that maybe promotes certain sales. So if these two events occur in the same session, it means that at least some promotions on our site are actually working, or at least they are helping our users to discover sales and make a purchase. So with this combination, you could create another audience trigger and it will fire when someone sees a promotion and then makes a purchase. But this kind of condition will also apply to situations where the purchase happens first and then the visitor sees the promotion. So if you want to be more specific and you're looking for a specific order of events, for example, first you want to see the promotion and then you want to track a purchase, then you could remove this condition block right here and instead add a sequence where the first step is select promotion and then the second step is purchase. And this must occur within the same session. Another example where you might find audience triggers useful is to make sure that a particular conversion is tracked only once per session. Because in Google Analytics 4, if you are working with conversions, you will find out that if the same conversion happens three times in the same session, that conversion will be counted three times. But if you want to count, let's say, form submission only once per session, because what matters to you is just the fact that a conversion occurred and it doesn't matter for you to see three conversions, then you could once again use that session start event. So you could click on add condition group and then say that if a visitor submits a form and let's say that the event of that submission is generate lead and also session start event occurs within the same session, then the audience trigger based on this audience will fire only once per session because session start happens only once per session. And that is how you can configure audience triggers in Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.